thanks again for having the time um, to host me today. So I'm gonna share with you guys a presentation about Rentsbury, which is a CRMLS marketplace product. So I'm gonna take it away here and share my screen with you. Okay. So a little bit, my, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm the customer success manager here at Rentsbury. I basically help evangelize our product and ensure all of our partners are able to use it effectively and answering any questions or concerns. And I also conduct um, webinars and trainings to members. For today's agenda, we're gonna start off by going through some key tenant screening points. We're gonna dive in, into some of the steps of the tenant screening process. We're gonna go through a screening demonstration of the Rentsbury software. And finally, we'll have time to take some questions towards the end of the webinar. So now that it's 2020 and we're in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic, we have to ask, our, ask ourselves, where is tenant screening headed? There are a lot of changing regulations um, at the citywide level, statewide level, and national level that we have to keep track of. Um, sometimes we can feel overwhelmed. So it's really important to stay on top of these regulations so you can um, ensure that the tenant screening process you have in place uh, meets the criteria. Going alongside that, there's a lot of increased risk nowadays since a lot of tenant screening is being conducted online. Um, there's the potential for data breaches or security risks, especially since you're hand handling a lot of PII uh, like SSNs and driver license numbers directly from the applicant. So the great thing about Rentsbury with our technology is everything is secured in the cloud. So you don't have to worry about applicant information uh, being out there available to the general public since it's all stored securely on our system. Going off those current screening issues, a couple of ones that we've seen are again, data breaches when handling sensitive information. We're seeing a lot of applicant identity fraud. So applicants are using the social security number of someone else when they're applying for a property. Uh, finally, we're also seeing a lot of discriminatory practices. So uh, tenants unfortunately can be discriminated against on the basis of religion, race, um, creed, ethnicity, things of that nature. So it's really important to uh, make sure you're complying with all the regulations for that point as well. Now I wanna talk about some of the key tenant screening points here. Um, the first is availability and accuracy. You first wanna ask yourself, what kind of information can you access from the applicant? And since you're accessing it directly from the applicant, you wanna ask yourself again, how accurate is that information? We've talked about the laws and regulations that are constantly changing. So it's important to be aware of the best practices for tenant screening while at the same time figuring out how those practices can help lower your risk so you're not handling a lot of the confidential information from the applicant side. Thirdly, uh, you wanna consider the cost of tenant screening. So think about how much each of the different components of your screening process um, costs and how you can minimize those costs. And going off of that, the convenience factor. So normally when you apply for a property that's a rental, you have to wait a, two or three business days in order to get uh, your credit report and all of that information um, sent to your potential landlord. Cutting down that time will help you focus more on the rental transaction and close it quicker. Uh, and that way you can have more time to focus on the real money maker, which is a sales transaction. So it's really what we can do for you is, is to condense that time frame and turn it around so you can receive those screening reports right away instead of having to wait those two to three business days. During the process, um, and actually before, the, the first step that you wanna set is to make sure your screening criteria are available to all your applicants. Uh, and you also wanna market the property as best you can and you wanna pre-screen. So pre-screening uh, means setting the criteria so that way your applicant pool is self-selecting. So if someone knows that they won't meet your criteria for the rental property, they can automatically take themselves off your list and you won't have to even have to worry about that. During the screening, you're also gonna to wanna to show your property. Again, you wanna take all the necessary precautions during this time. You're gonna start collecting those rental applications and finally run the screening reports. After the process, once you've condensed your pool down to a few um, potential tenants, you're gonna to wanna to verify the applicant information issue a decision, and then finally onboard and lease your chosen tenant. Now there's a couple of ways uh, you can market a property. 
Uh, but the first point that I really want to highlight here is the quality of the content really matters. The more professional pictures that you post, the more high quality description that you're writing, uh, the more videos that you have, um, the more like live walkthroughs you have on social media, all that content will help you attract the best quality renter. So there's different avenues that you can take here. Normally, since we're staying at home nowadays, a lot of people are using social media more and more to keep on top of the news and recent developments. So consider using Facebook, Twitter, um, even Instagram as possible ways to market your property. Craigslist is another tried and true option here as well. And you can also post properties on the MLS if you wish to do so. And then again, going back to my previous point is you want to share the screening criteria on your listing if you can, because again, that way you'll have a self-selecting pool of renters and they'll know exactly what you're looking for. We're going to talk about quickly some of the pre-screening questions you can ask. You want to make sure that the applicant knows what they're getting into. So some of the questions you can ask about the property are this, you know, what square footage are you looking for? Will you have roommates? Um, is there laundry on site? All those questions um, will help them get a better idea of the property. And it's your job to reiterate the terms of the rental. So you can outline if it's a six month lease, if it's a year long lease, if there's a security deposit involved, make sure to set those terms right away um, so your applicants know ahead of time and they can start making all the necessary preparations there. And again, I can't emphasize this point enough. You want to share the screening criteria uh, because this will help kind of turn away those who don't qualify for your property. And then be aware uh, that you have to listen to your applicants. You know, give them room to talk and try not to like dominate the conversation uh, when you're speaking to them. And having those little moments of uh, silence will let them elaborate and let you get to know them a little bit better. There's different ways you can show the property. Um, obviously now um, it's, things are getting a little bit tricky. So an individual showing would be the first option. Um, in this option, you can just do a one-on-one -on -one at the property, um, set a specified time that's convenient for you and the individual. And this will give you the opportunity to really get to know them better and have that one-on-one -on -one, um, conversation so you can answer all their questions at a time that's convenient to you and for them. The downside of this uh, individual showing, however, is that you really have to be on top of your schedule um, so again, if you feel organized and you have a calendar in front of you where you have all these individual showings listed, great. But if you don't, it may be better to consider an open house when things go back to normal. The benefit of an open house is that since you have a couple of hours blocked aside, you can have as many applicants on the property as you wish. So again, you don't have to worry about convenience. However, some of the downsides here are again, you know, we might not know when open houses might be available, get mail, available again. And you may not have the time to develop that one-on-one -on -one relationship versus if you were doing an individual showing. The block showing is the best of both worlds. So if you're doing a block showing, you can actually block out a couple of hours. And instead of having multiple individuals at the same time, you can actually schedule hour long or 30 minute blocks with an applicant. And that way you can both meet multiple people on the same day and you have the time to develop that one-on-one -on -one relationship with them. And when it comes time to collect that really important rental application, you're going to want to make sure it includes the following criteria. Personal information, uh, the name of the applicant, uh, number of identification, like an SSN or a driver's license. You want to set the move-in date and ask them if it's just going to be them living there or if there are other occupants. Uh, so as a reminder, if there are other occupants, it's best to collect a screening report for each occupant. You're also gonna to wanna to verify previous residence history. So the, your best resource there is talking to their current and previous landlord, trying to find out um, how much rental payments they were making each month, uh, how good of a tenant were they, were they complying with all the regulations that you had set out. And you're also gonna to wanna to get an idea of their employment and income. So make sure they provide you with their current and previous employer, uh, their pay stubs, um, and all of that to make sure that they have a history of paying rent on time, and that they'll, they'll be able to keep paying the rent on time. If you want to get a sense of the applicant beyond their professional status and their residential history, make sure you reach out to the references, not just professional, but also personal. You want to get an idea of who this tenant could be, uh, what kind of personality they are to kind of make sure that they will possibly be a great fit for your property. And then some other miscellaneous things that you can ask them are if they have support animals or comfort animals, 
since you can charge them a pet deposit if you like. Um, and again, finding out possibly if you know they have any bankruptcies on the record, uh, if they are a cigarette smoker, uh, is, if can your property accommodate that or not. So these are all things that should be part of the, the rental application, um, things you can be thinking about. And when it comes time to pull the reports, here is just a quick um, overview of what those screening reports can include. The first is obviously a credit score. A credit score will really give you a good idea of the applicant's financial history and if they can keep paying the rent on time. Secondly, you can request a background check. Um, this is just, again, something to help you determine if the applicant really is who they say they are and if they don't have any red flags in their, in their past. You can request an eviction history report, which can give you an idea, again, because evictions can be very costly. You want to make sure that they don't have anything on the record as well. And finally, you want to make sure that your screening report has an applicant identity verification step. Since a lot, and these days we're seeing a lot of fraud, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, uh, you want to make sure that your applicant really is who they, who they say they are. Some of the ways that you can verify the information I've already spoken about in the presentation, um, but again, putting an SSN on the screening report, um, verifying the residential history, verifying employment and income, and then finally reaching out to the references there. And when it comes time to issue a decision, there's a couple of decisions you can make. If the applicant meets all your criteria, you're confident in who they are, the references check out, you can go ahead and accept them without any additional conditions. And two examples of adverse actions you can take are acceptance on condition. So in this case, the applicant may not meet the minimum income criteria. Um, they may have a little bit of a lower credit score than you were expecting. In that case, you can choose to accept them on condition and have a co-signer on the lease. And you can possibly also request them to pay a security deposit as well. And finally, uh, you should be able to communicate uh, the rental applicant a denial um, directly. So that way you're not leaving anyone in the dark. Then when it comes time to sign the lease, again, just make sure this is pretty straightforward. The terms of the rental are reiterated. So if it's a one-year lease, make sure to outline that as well. Now, RentSpeak comes in by saving you time, reducing liability, and being available to you at no cost. So since we're affiliated with CRMLS, uh, there's no monthly or annual commitment that you need to make to pay to use the RentSpeak software. So the renter is responsible for the cost of the screening reports. So they'll, they'll just pay a $30 fee directly to Rentspre, and you won't need to handle their SSN or any payment information. Um, finally, uh, you'll be able to save time by accessing uh, screening reports on the web instantaneously. So the applicant pays, a f pays the fee and the screening reports will be available to you right away. So you don't have to wait two or three business days. What's included in the rents pre suite is an online rental application, which the applicant can fill out both online and on um, a mobile device. You also receive a TransUnion credit report, which is, I want to point out here, a soft inquiry. So this report will actually not ding the, credit, the applicant's credit score at all. You also have the option of requesting the criminal background check and the eviction history report, which includes all 50 states. So these four components here the applicant just pays the one fee of $30 each time they apply for a property. If you wish to share the reports on Rentspree, you can do so with other landlords and agents. So you don't have to worry about sending the PDF of the report in an unsecured email. You can just share it directly from the Rentspree dashboard so other landlords and agents can access it securely. And finally, when it comes time to make the decision, uh, Rentspree actually allows you to communicate an acceptance or denial letter that can be fully customized directly from the dashboard as well. So now I'm going to give you give everyone a live demonstration here of the software. So I'm going to sh switch my screen here. Can everyone see this a live demonstration? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you see this now, Nikki? Tenant screening made easy. Um, no, all I see is live demo. Okay, let me switch here. Okay, here we go. So you'll know you're in the right place if you see this screen here, Tenant Screening Made Easy. And the URL that you wanna look for is crmls.rentspree.com. 
So the CRMLS logo will be here in the top left. And if you have questions or you don't know where to start, you can click request a demo here. And this will take you to our calendar where you'll be able to schedule a time with a Rentspree support agent. So you can just click on here, for example, July 9th, schedule at 915 and put in your first, last name and email and phone number and a Rentspree agent will reach out to you at that time to kind of walk you through the software and give you a 10 minute demo. So to start screening, it's very simple. Uh, just click start screening here. And you're gonna to want to put in your email address here and a strong password of eight or more characters and click sign up with email. And notice here really quickly that you can sign up if you're an agent, but also if you own properties or if you're managing properties on behalf of somebody else. So we're gonna go ahead and click, I am an agent here, accept the agreement, and you'll be taken directly to the Rentspree dashboard, which is here. So this is kind of like your home base. This is where you're gonna see all the addresses of the different properties that are available to be rented out for you. You can also select to add a new listing here to add to this list. And you can also start screening applicants directly from the dashboard as well. So we're gonna go ahead and select start screening. And here you're gonna to wanna to put in your mailing address. This can either be your residential address or your office address. So make sure you fill it out completely with the phone number included as well. And here in the add new property, you're gonna to wanna to add the property that you're gonna be collecting screening reports for. So we're gonna go ahead and type in a dummy property here with the city, state, and zip. And now here I just wanna point out that there's two screening options for the payment. So in 90% of the time, the applicant, as I mentioned, will pay the $30 directly to Rentspree. However, if you wish to collect a higher amount from the applicant or if you don't wanna burden them with the extra cost, you can choose to pay the screening fee yourself. However, in most cases, we're, the applicant will pay, so we'll select that. And I also want to point out that the screening items here are a la carte. So if you want to pare down your applicant pool first, you can select the rental application, and then you can select the credit report and score once you, once you want to get a little bit more of a detailed picture um, of the applicants. So I want to point out here as well that the, credit report, that the credit report and score does include that applicant verification step. So when you're applying on Rentspree as a renter, you have to answer a series of challenge questions. And if you fail to answer those questions incorrectly multiple times, you will actually be locked out of the Rentspree system. So that's just to provide an extra layer of security for you um, to kind of make sure that you're dealing with the applicant who's legitimate. And I also wanna point out as well, you won't be able to select just a criminal background check and eviction without selecting the credit report first. So once you've made your selections here, you can click next. And you're gonna see that there's different options to screen. So if you want to send the applicant the screening application for that property, you can send them an email. So if you have multiple applicants, uh, the system actually lets you send emails to multiple applicants. So we can just send a request here. And once that's done, your job as an agent on Rentspree is pretty much done. So now the ball is in the applicant's court to kind of start filling out the application, pay the fee, and get those screening reports over to you. And if you don't have the email, that's okay, since you can actually enter multiple phone numbers here and the renter will receive a text message with the application link to apply for that property as well. The second option is that you can share the lease link. So this link right here is unique to 123 Main Street, that dummy address that we placed in the beginning. So if you wanna advertise your property on your personal website, on your Facebook, any other social media, or even in the private remarks section of the MLS, this is a great option um, for you since the link will be right there and the applicant doesn't need to, need to navigate anywhere else to start screening. Finally, when things go back to normal, uh, this screening handout that I can show you here is a great option um, if you're conducting open houses um, since the tenant will always, since the, your applicant will always ask you, what's the next step? I really like this property and I want to rent it out. What should I do next? You can actually give them this screening handout here, which will give you the address of the property, uh, your name and your contact info here. And it'll actually include all the items that are gonna be part of the screening software. So since we selected all those four items, you'll see that they're listed here. And all the applicant needs to do is simply scan this QR code here with their smartphone 
which will take them to the link to apply for that particular property. So once the applicant pays the $30 directly to Rentspree and submits the application, you can go, ba go back to your dashboard and you can actually see that you've requested two applicants to start filling it out. And if you wanna get an extra layer of detail here, simply click on the address and you can see the two emails that you've sent requests to to start filling out the application. The status here is request sent and it'll give you a high level overview um, of the applicant's credit, risk, credit score and if they have any marks on their background or eviction report and it'll give you a high level of their, of their monthly income as well. So I'm gonna pause and take you to a completed report just so you can see what that looks like. So here you can see that the address of the property is the same here. You've requested one applicant to fill it out and notice here that it says completed. So you click on the address and you'll see that an applicant's screening report is actually ready for you to view. It'll give you all the high level information that I mentioned earlier in the presentation. And if you click on their name, it'll take you directly to their screening report. So this gives you the name of the applicant and a lot of all the high level information um, with some detail here. Um, to give you the best possible picture of your applicant. There's a couple of things you can do with the report here. Um, if you wish to share it with another agent, let's say if the applicant doesn't get accepted to one property, you can share the report directly from the rent spree dashboard here with other agents or landlords. You can also print the report um, and that way you can access it offline. And finally, you can save the report as a PDF. So if you want to email it out, um, you can do so. Just want to keep uh, make a reminder here that this this report is going to be valid on the Rentspree platform for 30 days. So, and again, just a reminder to everybody: the best link to go start screening applicants on Rentspree would be crmls.rentspree.com, and actually, I can actually post that in the chat later on as well. So, we'll stop now if we have any questions. Okay, so we have a question from Shireen. Um, I have an applicant who completed a rental application, rent spree application several months ago, but needs to update her submission. Uh, the system is not allowing her to update it nor start a new one. How can she and potential co-tenants work around this? Um, that's a great question. So if an applicant completes an application a couple of months ago, but needs to update it, um, they, they'll have to submit a new application, but they won't have to pay the $30 fee uh, directly to rent spree again. And I also want to point out here that uh, Rentspree is available in all 50 states. So let's, let's say if you have a rental property in Arizona or Nevada, uh, you can actually use Rentspree there as well. So it's not limited to just California. Okay, I think that's it, Nikki. If we have any questions, and I just want to remind you that we're going to be recording this as well. So if anyone wasn't able to attend today, uh, they'll be able to see, receive a recording. Stephen, a couple of people said that they couldn't see the report you showed. Oh, the, um, yes, the completed report, correct? Yeah. Okay, let me go back to that real quick. One second here. Here we go. Can you see that okay, Nikki? So this is the completed report. Yeah, we can um, see it now. Excellent, excellent. So yeah, this is going to have the credit score here. Um, it's multiple pages long. And it gives you all the information here. No pets, no vehicles, things of that nature. And again, just really quickly, if you want to share this report or view it later on, you can just hit save as a PDF and that'll save it directly to your computer. So you can email it out if you wish. You can print it or you can share it with another agent or landlord directly from the dashboard as well. Okay. And a reminder to everybody, there's no monthly or annual fee to use Rentspree. I'm gonna go ahead and post the URL here um, in the Anyone chat Anyone else box. have any questions, put them in the Q&A before we end. So. Um... We can, Stephen can get your questions. Okay. 
Well, thanks again, Nikki, for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, again, if anyone has any questions, um, I'm going to post our email address here for support. It's just simply support at rentsbury.com. So feel free to email us or give us a call. If you have any questions, we're available for you Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. There's one more question in there. Let's take a look. So Diana was asking if we have lease agreements provided. That's actually a new feature. So stay tuned because soon you're going to be able to send lease agreements directly from the Rentspre dashboard as well. So we will keep you posted on that for sure. And then Susan asked if uh, she can receive a copy of the presentation. Yes, um, if you want a copy for future use, I can definitely email you directly. Um, if you want to post, uh, send me your email address, I can definitely reach out to you. If you guys want that, you need to please email him directly at support at rentsfree. Don't post your emails in the chat. Just go ahead and email support at rentsfree.com. And I put it in the chat for you guys if you need it. Thanks, Nikki. And one more question from Evelyn. Uh, is it free to us? And please repeat who pays what? Yes. So there, there's no monthly or annual fee that you pay to Rentspree. So each time you want to rent a property out, the applicant will be the one who pays the $30 fee directly to us. And I think that's it. I don't see any more questions here. Nope, that's all great. Thank you, everybody. And thanks, Stephen. We appreciate it. Um, you guys have his email address and the website if you need to get a hold of them and ask for any information. And um, oh, Stephen, there's one more question. Do you have a referral to eviction something? I'm not exactly sure what oh, that is. Oh, eviction attorney? I do not, unfortunately. Oh, OK. I do not. I didn't know that. I'm sorry. I thought that was regarding the presentation. OK. Um, and then the new lease, how is it different from CAR? I don't know what. Do you guys, did you mention that you have a lease? Steven? Well, so that's still in progress. I don't want, I don't want to make any promises I can't keep. So we're developing a system uh, where you can actually send a lease agreement to potential tenants and they'll be able to fill it out with DocuSign, like an electronic signature. Uh, and you can also um, retrieve a car rental application directly from Rentspree as well. So you can actually use theirs if you're more comfortable using their rental application. Um, and then one more question from Evelyn here. Um, are you going to do the credit report and eviction report? Yes. So if you request it, it'll be given to you and it'll be given to you right away. So the applicant pays a $30 fee on Rentspree and they'll you'll get the reports right away. Um, a couple of you have your hands raised. So if you have a question, please put it in the Q&A before we end. Uh, and if you put it in the chat, we won't see it. So please put it in the Q&A. That way Stephen can uh, look at it. You, there's a couple more in there, Stephen. Do you see them? Yes, yes. A question about zip form. Uh, there's a lease CAR form. What is the difference? So I guess she's asked, the form, the, the CAR lease form that's in zip forms, is that different from your form? Yes, yes. There's a there's a couple of different nuances between between our rental application and the CR rental application. Do you know those specific things, or? Um, I can I can get back to Susan directly okay. and look into that for her for sure. All right, Susan. So send him an email and he can get you that information. Uh, there's one more at the bottom if you see that one. Oh, two more, sorry. Yes, so is there a way to give a non-member access to this, for example, an on-site property manager? Um, so in some cases where you wanna just share the report with a, a member who doesn't have access, you can definitely do so. So in that case, if you wanna share the screening report, what I would do um, is to actually save it as a PDF and send it in a secured email to whoever is a non-member like the property manager. And then another question, um, is there an application to collect rent or rent payment? Um, that's actually another feature that's in the works that we're currently working on. So hopefully it'll be live by the end of the year, if not early next year. That's a great question for Michael. Let's see. Did you get all of those, Stephen? Uh, let's see here. 
is there a way to give a non-member access for applications? Yes. Correct. Yeah, so Nikki, if you're able to pull, uh, I may not have gotten to every single question, but if you're able to kind of pull them, um, I can ask my support team to answer each one individually and I can share a document with you. So everyone else who yeah, may have had the same question. It's better for when the, those of them have specific questions to email you. Yes, um, yeah. Because I don't, sure. don't want to have to be the middle person for questions. It's easier if they get a hold of you directly. Yes, yes. So support at rentspree.com um, would be the best way to get a hold of us. Perfect. And you got the, um, is there an application to collect rent or rent payment? Yes, that's in the works. That's in the works. That's not something that you, that you can do from Rentspree right now, but soon enough, you'll be able to collect a rental monthly payment on our software as well. So stay tuned for that. Okay. And then you got uh, Betty's question. Um, is it normal to request a background check report? I would say it depends. Um, just be mindful that the, some states don't actually uh, provide a background checks. So it's only available in 44 states. So I, I would check with the uh, with TransUnion on that, since that's one of our that's our partner vendor for that. And then and can that can that be done in the state of New York? Yes. Yes, anywhere across the U.S. Anywhere across the U.S. If you have a rental property, let's say in Alaska, Arizona, Texas, you can definitely use Rentspree. So it's not tied to any particular. Um, region or state. Perfect. Okie doke. I think we've got all our questions answered. Thank you so much. If you have questions for him, additional questions or follow-up questions, please email support at rentsfree.com. And this video will be posted on YouTube later on today. Thank you, Nikki. And I want to say a happy 4th of July to everybody. Yes. Hope you stay safe. Thanks. You too. Thank you. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.